담화문에서도 제시한 그런 그 안전 In my view, the various changes and reforms that I have outlined in my address to the nation, such as the overhaul of our safety culture as well as reform of our civil service, can't be regarded as a complete distinction to our efforts to revitalize our economy and to lay a robust foundation for our economy. When I unveiled my three-year plan for economic innovation at the outset of this year, the overarching goal, the primary objective, was to normalize abnormality that has been rampant in our society, thereby cementing the fundamentals of economic foundation. Second was to promote a creative economy, and third was to ensure greater balance in terms of our domestic demands and export. And so in terms of putting wrongs to right, that has been missing in our society. We must endeavor to weed out our society's deep-rooted ills that are rampant in Korean society. So efforts to normalize abnormality will be addressing these issues. We believe in that progress we can further strengthen the foundations of our economy. If we faithfully implement these reform efforts, I believe we can look forward to a stronger economy and look forward to revitalizing our economy. For these reform efforts will be very helpful in that regard. In any event, these are efforts we must seek to undertake. Another nuclear test conducted by North Korea would basically make the six-party talks really lose their point. And indeed, North Korea would effectively be crossing the Rubicon if they were to conduct another nuclear test. The Chinese have also expressed their resolute opposition to another nuclear test by North Korea and have firmly expressed their commitment that they won't accept a nuclear-armed North Korea. And the Chinese have worked very hard to this effect. China's role continues to remain very important. I see this for many reasons, including the fact that China accounts for about 90 percent of North Korea's external trade. Thus, it exerts considerable economic influence over North Korea. So even as we go forward, the Chinese will be vital. We are working with other member states of the six-party talks to make sure that North Korea denuclearize and to uphold the fact that we will not accept a nuclear-armed North Korea. We are engaging in consultations on various ways to make substantial progress in this regard. With regard to the South China Sea and East China Sea issue, the Korean government does watch this issue with considerable concern. With regard to the East China Sea issue in particular, we are carefully monitoring the abiding state of tension and conflict among the relevant countries and we are watching it with serious concern. And in particular, I would note that the East China Sea has implications for Korea's economic interest, maritime transportation and air defense as well. So it does have implications for Korea's interests as well. And we hope to see the relevant countries deal with this issue smoothly through dialogue. As for the South China Sea, any significant dispute shouldn't break out in the South China Sea because that would undermine peace and stability in the Asia-Pacific region. Moreover, the South China Sea is also important for Korea, for its major sea transportation route. Thus, we watch this area with concern as well. And we hope that the relevant countries will be able to deal with this issue in accordance with international law as well as the Declaration on the Conduct of Parties in the South China Sea. Even in the case of Germany, people weren't sure really when the unification would come. Some said maybe 10 years later. But really, the German unification came out of the blue. So even in the case of Korea, likewise, there's really no knowing when unification would in fact come. So the most important thing for us is to make sure we do our best to prepare for the day of unification. What we need in this process is not just for South and North Koreas to work together, but also we need to work together with neighboring countries, and we also need the support and assistance of the international community. And as we seek to aspire to peaceful unification of the Korean Peninsula, what's most important is to question what vision will be guiding our aspirations and indeed share a vision that unification would not just be about overcoming physical division of the Korean Peninsula, but also contributing to peace and prosperity of Northeast Asia and around the world.